Banks around the world have been busy recently, including the Swiss National Bank, the Bank of England, the European Central Bank, and our own beloved Federal Reserve. All of them trying to use interest rates to tame inflation without sinking their economies. And as interest rates go up, our interest in interest rates goes up as well. Welcome to Global Sourcing Insights from SIPS. I'm Bob Rosbeck. Since the cost of money gets baked into the cost of most things, and it changes the demand for a lot of things, we are taking a close look today at the recent actions of the U.S. Federal Reserve and a few other economic indicators that may affect our own sourcing decisions going into 2023. Our guest today is a financial journalist and one of the closest watchers of the Fed that you will ever meet. She is Terry Sheehan, analyst at Econoday, a firm that helps the rest of us keep tabs on release of data that can move markets. So, welcome to the show, Terry. How are you? Thank you. I'm well. Excellent. So, the Fed says the number for interest rates is one half a percent in increase, that is, a 50 basis point increase. Now, that's less than the last increase, but an increase nonetheless. What do you think? Was that the correct call? You do have three choices now. Yes, no, or maybe so. So what do you, what's your choice? I think yes. Uh, I think that um, part of it is that the Fed had been signaling another rate increase, another substantial rate increase, but not uh, on the scale of the 75 basis points that we had seen in the prior four meetings. Uh, this is good communications to markets. So in terms of uh, what they did with rates, that was the right thing to do. The economy is slowing. Uh, they have substantial tightening in the pipeline. They need to ease up a little bit and take a little time for the data to catch up with prior rate hikes. Okay, so what do you think of the key factors they looked at to determine that a half percentage increase was the correct number. What are the what are the key things that they are looking at? Well, clearly, it what they're looking at is inflation and inflationary pressures and inflation expectations. Uh, what I think they were looking at carefully was where the inflation data, where is inflation actually happening in the data. Uh, Chair Powell highlighted three aspects of inflation that the Fed looked at. Uh, one was um, how rate hikes have been affecting the housing sector. Uh, one was in how its effect, rate hikes have affected demand for commodities in the pipeline. And the other is services in the non-housing sector. And he said he and the other policymakers were deeply concerned about the non-housing service sector where most of the inflation is still happening, it's still persisting, it's still elevated. Okay, so there's still a ways to go. Yes, and they have been very, Powell and the others have been very specific that they are not done raising rates yet. Were there any, was there any economic data out there that might have suggested that they could have gone to a, a higher number, gone back to a, another 75 basis point? Uh, given that there has been some improvement in the overall inflation numbers, uh, no, I don't think so. They're seeing relief in things like energy prices. Uh, continued gains in food prices are, of course, a continued concern because that's one of the big non-discretionary income. Uh, items. Uh, they're also, I think, very concerned about how rents and other housing costs are going up. Uh, but uh, for the moment, I think they see some improvement, so less need for another really big rate hike. Were there any indicators out there that might have suggested that a smaller or a no increase decision might have been the right one? I know there were probably some people on Wall Street who were hoping for, hey, you know, I, we probably tamed inflation, you know, things are going down, retail sales might not be as much. So, hey, can't can you give us a break? Yeah, <laughs> the eternal hope for the Fed pivot. Um, <laughs> no, um, I really don't think so. Um, I know that the indications are that we're going to see another subpar quarter in the fourth quarter growth. Uh, but uh, I don't think that Fed policymakers were 
feeling that that um, needed to be immediately addressed in their monetary policy. Their focus is very much on inflation, inflation, inflation right now. They've yeah. got a fairly strong labor market. Uh, even if growth is very slow, it's still growth right now. So um, their, their mission right now is to get inflation down. Yeah. So you mentioned inflation expectations. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a hard one to measure, isn't it? I mean, how do you, but inflation is a game of, uh, it is it is affected by expectations. If it people is. expect inflation to continue, then uh, they build that into their pricing and they, mm -hmm. and they also build it into their requests for, you know, labor contracts, contracts, for instance. So how important is that? And how do they, how do you think the Fed measures expectations? Well, there's several surveys of consumer and business expectations. Uh, New York Fed has a very well regarded one for consumer price expectations um, that they recently added a five year measure to, which is interesting because that's sort of the medium term that the Fed talks about. Uh, the uh, University of Michigan Survey of Consumers. Uh, they also look at things like the inflation compensation in the tips, treasury tips uh, issues. Uh, so they, um, Atlanta Fed has a business inflation expectation. So there's a number of ones out there that they can look at. Uh, those had kind of been edging up recently, but they've come down again. So I think that brief hike in energy prices that we saw a couple of months ago, that has since unwound fairly substantially, uh, has reassured that inflation is not going to, or a high level of inflation is not going to become entrenched. Whether the Fed can actually get inflation back down to its 2% target uh, anytime soon is in question. Yes. So that that raises the question of how quickly do these decisions turn into pricing and demand changes? Uh, when you see, if you've watched these interest rates go up and down for quite some time. So how long does it usually take for uh, an, an action by the Fed to actually turn into uh, into differences? And what differences uh, do, do you look at? Obviously inflation, but are there other markers that suggest that the trend is correct? Uh, I think mostly what we see is things like the short-term interest rate sectors have immediate impacts. Things like housing clearly has slowed down significantly since the start of the rate hikes. Um, other buying decisions depend on, in, sense, in your access to credit, uh, businesses uh, where they could, I think, locked in rates uh, for their short-term borrowing. Um, so um, we don't necessarily have a good indicator because so many different sectors of the economy respond differently to these things. Okay. So we'll just have to wait and see. But uh, but their their own forecast suggests that uh, we're going to have you know, substantially higher uh, interest or inflation rates uh, through 2023 and probably into 2024, isn't that? Yes. Well, and what they're seeing is that these um, non-housing service sector prices are kind of sticky and harder to address through monetary policy. Yeah, you have a hammer and that's the only tool you have. And so it's hard to finesse some of the other things, uh, commodity increases, commodity price increases, supply chain disruptions, that sort, those sorts of yeah. things are I, you know, impossible to predict. Yeah, I mean, the Fed carries a pretty heavy burden in terms of trying to address these imbalances in the economy, and they basically have a one tool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my toolbox has more than one, more than a hammer. So, yeah. uh, and the Fed do, unfortunately doesn't have have anything more than that. So, um, I'm thinking of our procurement people, people who are running supply chains. And uh, so what can they expect? Uh, they really should expect higher 
price or price pressures for for quite some time. You know, it has been a uh, for a long time. It was a it was a buyer's market, but this is I would call this a seller's market right now. And uh, how long do you see that uh, playing out? Well, uh, some of the earliest of the manufacturing surveys for December have shown that things like uh, unfilled orders are continuing to contract. Uh, delivery times are flattening out. Uh, plans to increase inventories are declining quite substantially. Uh, so um, I think what we're seeing is that uh, we're just go moving into a period of slower growth. And uh, some of the imbalances are going to work their way through the system via that slower growth, which is what the Federal Reserve intends. Okay. So we'll just w watch it uh, play out. So there were a couple of other numbers that recently came out. One was retail sales for November, and people mm -hmm. are interpreting that in different ways. Uh, uh, because it was sort of it was down from October, but October might have been artificially inflated. And so uh, how do you read the tea leaves? Well, I think um, a lot of businesses got or at least tried to get a jump on the uh, holiday shopping period in October. There was a lot of advertising, heavy discounting. Uh, the e-tailers had big promotions to match what Amazon was doing with their Prime Day in October. So I think October borrowed some shopping from November, but the November number was relatively weak. And um, it's, I think it's worrisome going into December, whether retailers are going to have that sort of surge of last minute shopping. Uh, we'll probably end up seeing a lot of the Cyber Monday, which turned into Cyber Monday week, uh, some of that shopping will uh, show up later. And I think uh, many consumers are going to be shifting to uh, online shopping in December, okay. uh, just because they wanna make sure they want, get the exact item and they don't wanna go out to the stores and go hunting. Although some people do like shopping. <laughs> Yes. Uh, were there any other, what other data points coming out in the weeks ahead will you be looking at? Uh, and in particular, are there any things that you're going to be looking at that would suggest that the Fed called it correctly or not? I think retail sales might be one of those kind of indicators. Definitely. I mean, there are some weekly uh, surveys of retail activity and a lot of anecdotal evidence that gets out there. So I am definitely going to be keeping an eye on those. Um, we're definitely going to be looking at uh, if things like motor vehicle sales ended the year uh, in a decent shape. Um, what next week's going to happen is a lot of the uh, housing sector data. And what I'm going to be looking for is if the recent drop in mortgage rates has helped spur some late year home buying. Because I know a lot of renters are looking toward uh, next year and another rent increase. And they may be thinking it might be time to buy even with rates above 6%. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you very much. We will be watching those and other indicators. And uh, uh, I hope uh, that you can come back and join us again uh, at some time to, uh, to take a look at those numbers. Thank you again, Terry Sheehan. Econ economic analyst and journalist from Econo Day. And if the economy is up, down, or sideways, it's always good to have insights such as yours to make sense of it. So Thank you. this has been Global Sourcing Insights from SIPS. I'm Bob Rossback. Have a great day.